Yeah, where are we? We're in Coronaville. That's where we are. The whole world is in Coronaville here on ThinkTech. I'm, I'm Jay Fidel. We have uh, Cynthia Sinclair. Uh, we have Stephanie Dalton. We have Winston Welch, our regular panel. Oh, it's so nice to see all you guys together. And we're going to talk about uh, Coronaville, what's going on in Corona. Um, it's very important that we track on this because it's actually the biggest story eh, of our time and maybe of our lifetime. So we really got to drill down, got to figure it out. The title of the show today is uh, what about complacency? You know, why are people so complacent? You know, one of the reasons that Europe has done better and they have done much better than us and Asia, and they have done much better than us. We are the worst in the world. You know, that's American exceptionalism, exceptionalism I guess. <clears throat> and, and, and a good part of that is complacency. And a good part of that complacency is thank you to Donald J. Trump. Thank you, Dr. Trump. Yeah. <clears throat> so the question I put to you, Winston, is why? Why are people in this country so damn complacent? Well, yeah, American exceptionalism, that's an interesting one, uh, if you tack it onto that. And when we are faced with the barrage of news that we get every single day, uh, just before Corona, just coming out of uh, our national sphere in the last three and a half, four years, it's overwhelming. When you have someone then in political power that says, this is a hoax, it's not real, don't wear your mask, inject bleach, whatever, it confuses people, they get, they don't know what's happening, and then they just figure, I can't deal with it, and someone offers them an easy suggestion, which says, let's open up, let's go have fun, let's eat out, let's uh, do whatever we're going to do. They brains are just getting fried and then they just figure you know what I'm going to do it it doesn't really matter and they give up I think it's just overwhelm and exhaustion and uh and confused messaging so people don't really they may know what to think but they are just they're exhausted by everything else that's coming down the pike all right there's an answer Stephanie I'm going to ask the question three times why uh, as I, I, I as I'm thinking about it and trying to understand it, I I believe in this um, power uh, issue, and I have heard some other things about power too. In, fa in fact, in relation to Trump's book, the first generation, the dad wanted to get famous, uh, rich, and then the next one is Donald, he gets famous, and then the third round of the family or whatever it is, the group going forward is to get the power. And so he certainly got that. So uh, all I can see is that these people are seeing um, advance, an advantage for them that they, they will not get. Otherwise they need this kind of an ignoramus to lead them, lead them leading on their terms, uh, the, the whole nation. And that that's where it's so hard to, accept and, and deal with and understand because it's so diametric to what we have as a list of beliefs. Um, anyway, so at, right now that's that's what I'm struggling with. Uh, there are other ways that it can be categorized, but it doesn't really have enough explanatory power to be satisfactory. So I am listening and trying to learn. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about it again in future shows. Uh... <clears throat> Cynthia, what do you think? What's the answer to my question? Why are they complacent? Well, there's a number of reasons, but I think the biggest one comes from comments like this one that came from um, Donald Trump just the other day, that 99% of cases are fine. There's no problem. It's no big deal. He's continued that narrative all the way through from the very beginning. And we get conflicting messages from politicians and we do from scientists. And unfortunately, people are listening to the politicians, some people are listening to the politicians instead of the scientists. Yeah, uh, okay, I, you know, it's, it seems to me that um, what's happened is, uh, as you all say, um, there's, there's confusion in the air, confusion because it's been politicized, um, because you, you can all confuse between your, your political views, your ideological views, and science takes a back seat. Rationality tax takes a back seat. I can't believe that an ordinary rational American person or a person living in America 
uh, would do these destructive things, destructive <clears throat> to himself or herself or destructive to neighbors. <clears throat> and science is clear, it tells us that, it tells us these are destructive things and yet they continue to do it. Um, I, I, it's just not a compliment to our, to our population, it's certainly not a compliment to his base. I think you get the idea that his base is not rational, it's somewhere else. But let me go to my second question. <clears throat> okay, Cynthia, we'll start with you. It's a why question again. Why is he giving mixed messages? Why can't he lead? Why can't he use scientific resources and experts in a way so to have a positive effect, a, um, you know, a, a working effect on dealing with the virus? Why? We know that he can't, but why? Um, because he's all about the money, I believe, is one of the main reasons why. And so he wants to give any kind of manufacturing contracts to people that are his cronies, uh, maybe big donors. We know now for a fact that um, a lot of the PPP, the, um, the loans that came out, went to people, that companies that are directly related and attached to Trump or his family. And so that's why he's all about the money. He doesn't think about the people. He doesn't really care about the people. He cares about the money and he cares about the power. Oh, you just see him as a psychopath, that's all. And that's probably because you're gonna take a close read on Mary Trump's book next Tuesday. Oh, yes, but I already know. All that's gonna do is just give me more confirmation because I've already seen the signs that he is a sociopath from the very beginning. Yeah, so, she calls him a psychopath, yeah. My sociopath, right? She He's calls him a psychopath. Nine out of nine point narcissist. And I definitely agree with that. Okay, Stephanie, maybe you have a, a, a more optimistic view of it. Why does Donald Trump do these things? Why is he um, not leaving us, not doing the obvious, easy things that would um, be able to combat the virus? Because I believe he's in it for himself. That's all it is. He's in there to get as much out of this as he can, which is what he thinks everybody else that was president did. He has no conception or understanding of the responsibility that the nation has given him. So he is, um, you know, about just making sure that he's out there, no matter what it is, he will he will overcome any news. Yesterday it was the book, and so therefore we had the schools. I bet you schools wasn't on his agenda yet. I mean, it could have been on the agenda, but on the agenda are all these things. So as soon as something comes up that he may not want out there in full blast, is here he comes with the next item that is going to get everybody all concerned of course and this is a pretty big one because it involves our children so i mean i just constantly now see it as him getting control over it to continue to uh, address his own interest just like he did for as cynthia said all of those awards that just make my stomach churn that those those high level awards amounts of money went places where they don't need them. And we have people who can't eat and kids that are hungry. I, I mean, it's enough to just make you cry. It's out, and why, and here I go again. And, and I, uh, ice, icing on this miserable cake is the rule of law. We are obligated, the population, we Americans are obligated to go through this crisis with him because we're using the law to try and get out of it. And the law's not working well for us. So, but we're doing it anyway because we're rule of law. So we're gritting our teeth and we're gonna get to this election. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen then because then it's probably- well, That's another question. We're gonna talk about that. So Winston, you know, what, what's happening here is 140,000 people are dying. Um, that's a lot of people. That's more than one person on Fifth Avenue as it, as it works out. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's almost intolerable, but it is the new normal. People are getting used to it. They're getting complacent. And Trump is therefore continuing his, his MO. Um, what, why do you think that he's incapable of dealing with this? Well, maybe that, that is the proverbial uh, 
person on Fifth Avenue, the 140,000, the million it will be, whatever it is, that's the proverbial one person that he can stand in the middle of the street and shoot them and no one will do anything or say anything. Or if they do, it's hemming and hawing. But it's like Cynthia has, uh, I, uh, Stephanie has said before that it's just master of distraction. Yesterday, it was the CDC coming out and, and having uh, Betsy DeVos pop up. Where, where has she been and how, what, how does she come out of her, her cave for this issue? Because they want to force people back in schools. Think about this. If you're a parent and you're, there's an there's a epidemic raging in your community, do you really want to subject your children to that? Or if you're a teacher, do you want to be forced back into that environment for a political agenda? This is, and this is the same party that wanted to eviscerate the Department of Education for decades. And now it's just being used as a cudgel to, to force people back in. It is, um, you know, you do have, I, I saw Dr. Fauci comes out and he says what he's going to say. He's been sidelined, although he, he makes the, uh, you know, the headlines, but Basically, uh, there is an agenda here to get people back in that this idea of maybe saving the economy, because that is one area where Donald Trump still is leading in the polls, from what I can understand. And so he thinks if I get this thing back going, if people going back to work, um, we've given up on the idea of containing this virus. It is just a matter of uh, the Swedish model, but gone extreme because we don't have uh, PPE. I've seen shortages again. Uh, so we how don't does forcing them back system. into school help him? How does forcing these kids back into school help him? I think that it lets their parents go back to work. Uh, and then also they hold that, they're going to hold that next. It'll be the Department of Labor saying, we're not giving, we will give some of you uh, the second round of, of uh, money, but for the rest of you, you got go back to work or you're not getting it because it doesn't matter whether you're working in the meat processing plant or wherever is a high risk environment. Um, you're going back. So this is all in aid of the reopening. He wants to force the reopening, even though his experts are telling him bad idea. That might be part of it, but it's also we remember that this is this is the fellow that is the only one who can solve all of our problems and uh, self stated that I alone am the, the answer to 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 um oh, all of the i want to cover that too. i'm the solution and so i want to cover that, that too that's that's part of uh, mary trump's book so much of this is part of mary trump's book i can hardly wait to get it so stephanie uh, you're an educator um and uh, you can sort of see the classroom clearly uh what does the classroom look like at a time like this there, there have been a number of educators who have spoken up against uh, his initiative trump's initiative to put mm -hmm. the kids back in school. What do, you, what do you think about it? Well, Arnie Duncan is is excellent when he comes on. He's the previous uh, Secretary of Education under Obama's administration. So he's got very good, very helpful and uh, knowledgeable and, and productive ways of talking about what can be done. But I, I wanna just share one um, thing. I always had my t teachers in training to or to student teachers or whoever were working in the classroom for the first time to remember that when you look out and see that six-year-old or you see that 16-year-old sitting standing there, you just put in your head that there are two to four people behind him, standing right behind him, who you will hear from. <laughs> And so you take those kids in your class and you multiply them by at least four because you're going to have responsibility to keep them um, informed. So here we go again. What's happening with the virus? You bring in that one kid, you don't have four people standing behind him. You have every, every contact he's had over the last, you know, 24 hours just flowing out of those kids and into the soup of the infection that will be in your classroom. So in my uh, thinking, it's even more dangerous than it's been described as being. It's highly dangerous and infective to, to bring all those kids back. And then the other thing is that we've been working for decades on sociocultural approaches into, um, into teaching in classrooms and changing them from the egg crate economies of what we know, you know, rows and columns and everybody doing their own thing and being quiet about it. <laughs> We've been working to move away from what's called the cemetery model 
of teaching and learning that work for us but doesn't work for everybody but so and here this is forcing us to go back do exactly the Charles Dickens classroom that they need. Oh, uh, Betsy, Betsy knows what to do. Um, by the way, her company's received a ton of money from the CARES Act. I guess you knew that. So I got a very hard question for you, Cynthia. This is a really, 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 really hard question. Um, I got to think of my question now. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so if you accept the proposition, which I think we all we all imply that um, that you can't really go back and reopen an economy unless you first deal with the virus, the epidemic, and and then all kinds of things are possible, um, all kinds of optimism can surface. Um, so the question I put to you, this is a really hard one. Now, are you ready? Are you sitting down, Stephanie? Okay. What is Trump doing to deal with the virus? He's using it to separate the people. No, no. What is he affirmatively doing? What is the United States government doing to deal with this pandemic? Um, not really anything. It's leaving it up to the states. So the federal government isn't really doing anything but silencing this, the um the scientists and putting out misinformation for us. And so I don't really see where you're going with this. They're over out buying some of the hospitals, the people that they're hoarding and not getting out to the people who need it. So what they're doing is they're turning it into a multi-million dollar business for themselves instead of using it as how can we help this country heal? How do we get control of this virus? Instead, what they're doing is, how can we make money off of this? How can we benefit from this? And that's all they think. Yeah, maybe I missed something, Winston. Maybe Stephanie missed something. Surely you can help us with this. What is the United States government doing to combat this pandemic? I mean, for example, for example, uh, one would expect that they would help the World Health Organization that they would collaborate with it, they would give it money and resources, they would have their scientists, uh, you know, work with their scientists. For example, you'd think of that, but I, that's, I guess that's not happening. I'd like your comment on that, by the way. Um, is, this so what, is this a, a trick, trick question? It's a trick question. I, what you know, is Jay. the United States government doing to combat, you know, the virus on the assumption that you really can never have a reopening unless you first deal with the virus? Well, that is not the assumption that we're going on. I think it's just saying, open up, let the chips fall where they may. Definitely uh, pull out of the World Health Organization because science, science, who needs science when you have a gut reaction on how things should go? Uh, we're, you know, the, the worst thing is that we're really just, we're saying we don't care about, about a certain percentage of the population. And if, if, if we have to sacrifice some people, too bad. Now, we're not like that in Hawaii. We're not sociopaths and we're not psychopaths. We realize, no, we're going to do our civic duty. We will wear a mask. We will wear our seat belts. Uh, we don't drink and drive. There's basic rules uh, that we follow. We don't run through stop signs. It's here to protect all of us. Federal government, don't worry about it anymore. It's not coming from them. Don't look to them for guidance or anything else. We are not Germany, we are not Denmark, and we are not Sweden. We can look to them for what's happening there, but they have very different systems. They have healthcare they, that is nationally based. They have excellent social support. Uh, we need to look at each other, at the states, at different countries, at different cities, for their models and find what's- I think I hear you saying we're not doing that now. We are doing- We're in chaos some, now. We're, do, we're in chaos right now, but out of the chaos, hopefully, We'll be able to look around and have at least 50 different state models of what's going on and inside of those states different city models and then we have the models around the world and this is a, a worldwide pandemic with at least 30 different strains so it's different in different places but I, I don't see I, I don't know what trump is going to do to stop additional deaths he's we not going to do anything that's running at a couple three thousand a day 
it's, uh, we're it's over not a priority. We're over three million cases now. It's not, you know, I and I what I hear from everybody takes it differently because it's a, you know, it's the dog whistle thing. Um, but um, what he's messaging is, if you die, it's okay. You're doing it for the country. You're a warrior. Stiff up a lip, you know, almost in a Churchillian fashion. You know, take it on the chin. Um, you're doing it for us. More specifically, you're doing it for me. So I guess the question I put to you, Stephanie, is are people buying that? Um, you know, fact is that he has politicized these rallies. He's politicized testing. He has politicized, you know, the numbers. I mean, I, I find it extraordinary that for the New York Times, this happened this week, to get the information necessary to determine the, the, the demographic of who is getting sick and who is dying, uh, they had to sue the United States government for that information. You would think, would you not, that that would be available to everyone in the time of a pandemic. But no, the government was not releasing it. And the Times had to go to court, get an order, and get that information. And lo and behold, they found that some extraordinary percentage of the cases were black and brown. Um, and so what you have is not only lying, but the secreting of information. Uh, are people getting the message on that? Do they understand? How does that affect this? The fact that this government, our government is lying to us. Well, I think that the smart people, black and brown, um, at, who are, are getting it and they are, they are reactive and, uh, and they've made some difference. And I think we owe them a lot to bringing the nation around uh, to pointing to a democratic candidate that it could make it and could serve us in the capacity of our chief executive. Uh, so I, I thank them. I think that they're mostly responsible for getting us unified. Okay, those of us who are in, interested in change. So what about uh, those? What about those? Uh, anywhere from six thousand to ten thousand people who showed up in Tulsa and didn't wear masks, just like their esteemed leader. <clears throat> and then now we have a spike in Tulsa that is beyond anything they've had before. Um, and a lot of people in Tulsa knew this was going to happen, but the people in that, in that rally apparently did. Do you think they know now? Do you think the world is taking note? Do you think the, 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 the states in which these spikes are now happening to extraordinary levels, do you think they know to wear masks? Do you think they know to avoid crowds? Well, they've got that, the aphrodisiac of power when they go there. And then it depends on when the smarts kick in into power. So when their anal analytic skills kick in and, to, and, and open the window within the power zone. So um, these are people who are committed and powerful now. And they see this as taking uh, finally their, their system, their values, their uh, ethos is, is represented. So, but my, my concern is, of course, we're all concerned about this, but he has the, all of the variables out there on the table and he's exquisite at doing this, obviously for all his life, which we'll find out more about in the book. But it's like Chairman Mao. First of all, you take away all the, anybody that's got any training in thinking or, you know, taking away any belief in, uh, anyway. and so what he has done in his own way, I see is very much like Mao should have been here to, to, he didn't even have to say communism to get everybody, you know, into the situation. Well, Stephanie, do you think it's breaking, I'm sorry, Cynthia, do you think it's breaking down? I mean, for example, I, I read on the Hill this morning that there's going to be um, a, a Q&A session among, you know, the regular suspects. That is uh, uh, Fauci, Burks, and what's his name, Redfield. Um, and, and those guys are going to answer questions and Trump won't be there uh, for the press. And they're probably going to talk about the, um, was it the CDC finding? Um, that it's, it's spread now, not by droplets, but, but by aerosol. I think that's, uh, or maybe it's, that's World Health Organization. Um, but, you know, that is scarier still. And, and what I get is the possibility that maybe some of those scientists are kind of, they have the public ear. Trump is still, at least on the surface, supporting Fauci. Um, maybe they're shoving off from him. Maybe they're taking their, their own initiative a little bit. Uh, is that going to make any difference? 
Well, I would hope so, but I'm afraid that the people that are following Trump the way they do, and and remember we talked before about that Dunning Kruger effect, where these people are psychologically tied to him and can't see past what he says, what Trump says. So they don't hear the scientists. They just shut them out, turn them off. Oh, it's just that guy. Oh, well, forget it. He says the opposite of what our hero says. So we're not going to listen. And that's, I'm, unfortunately, I think what's happening. So there's a certain swath of people that they're, they're not ever. But as we get closer to the election, Cynthia, um, it's going to go from 100 and what is it now? Almost 140 to 150, 60, who knows what in the next few months. That's undeniable. And it's also, you know, pretty obvious that it's Trump's fault. Um, he's the one who's done nothing and he's the one who's lied. Don't you think that's going to affect the election? Don't you think that's going to shrink the base? I would hope so, but I don't really know. Like I said, there's so many things that are involved psychologically that makes them tied to him. So maybe it'll shrink some of the outer layers of the base, right? But like we've got Redfield coming out yesterday, Pence said at the briefing that they are gonna redo the guidelines, the CDC guidelines for opening the school. And then Redfield comes out today and says, no, we're not. We're not gonna change those guidelines. And the guidelines, if you look at them, are very specific. They're, they're, they don't even take account to, for the teachers to stay safe, which is one of the things that in all of this planning, it seems like they've left the teachers out of all of it, out of the dialogue, out of, out of the whole entire process. Yeah, but they hadn't left us out of the dialogue. We're in the dialogue, you know what I mean? So uh, Winston, we're almost out of time and I wanted you to take a, a speculative view into the future well, I, um, and tell us what's, I'm sorry, Cynthia, go ahead. Well, I think the numbers are going to be um, manipulated. I think they're already being manipulated because we had all of this, you know, real steady growth in all the numbers, steady growth, steady growth, steady growth. Then all of a sudden it stopped and it's only growing very slowly. And I think with all these crazy spikes we've got going on, how is it that our, our numbers aren't getting bigger too? And so I, I think, you know, the New York Times maybe needs to take them back to court and get them to re-release the numbers again. Because I don't think we're really getting the true picture of what's happening. No, remember that uh, strange comment, I think it was Redfield, that said that for every, every case it's reported, there's 10 that are not. So, yeah, so this is pretty serious if that's so. Uh, but I don't know what's so anymore. And uh, I, I wonder, and this is a really hard question too, Winston, what's, what's gonna happen here? What's gonna happen over the next two weeks? Because Trump will be looking to satisfy his pathological urges. He'll be looking to you know, do things that will distract people and also help him in the perception of maybe those less educated among us. Um, that they should stay with him in the base and vote for him. He's going to be, you know, pushing on on voting rights. Who there's a bunch of cases coming up in the Supreme Court. I don't know when they're going to get heard, but what do you think the next great big news story or distraction is around coronavirus? I think uh, he continue to avoid it, and I think he's going to. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go back to me, but. Um, I think he's going to avoid it, and I think he's going to double down on all the stuff he's saying about the protesters, calling them traitors, calling them um, terrorists, calling them, these are just protesters, not specifically the rioters, but the protesters are all lumped together. And I think he's going to go after them even more and pump them up to be the enemy. The enemy is going to be that instead of the virus or he put it another way winston what do you think oh, you know, <laughs> I, think, I think i have amazingly talented and smart co-guests on this show uh and i'm always uh pleased to be in their company you know we can't ex if we don't expect a lot we won't be disappointed <laughs> <laughs> and if and uh you know, if, if that's terrible that you said that, <laughs> well, you know, but it's true. Let's focus on what we can do locally, locally, like as in me going to the store and me helping my neighbor and in our state, that's all we can do at this point. And, um, and 
if you believe in God, then pray. And uh, if you don't, then, or if you do, then vote either way. <laughs> so. Okay, well, let me say that there's a lot of lawyers on the mainland who are filing uh, amicus briefs in various cases. There's a lot of people, uh, maybe they're not in, you know, in parades, uh, maybe <laughs> that's too hard these days, <laughs> but, but, but they're speaking about it and we're speaking about it and we don't hold, we don't hold up. We're pretty candid, I must say, congratulations to us. But uh, I wanna give you the last opportunity, Stephanie, um, say something about what's gonna happen here. Um, how are we gonna be doing next week, the week after? Is it gonna get better or worse? And not good because one of the problems is Fox News. Okay, what used to be 20th century Fox, a vaunted uh, broadcaster, they are not telling these people, and this is the only channel that's watched, according to um, what I read in the papers, but also people will just be, just be, this is if you say, just check out CNN. You know, they have a chart up there and they show some data. But that Fox is not doing anybody any favors because they're misleading people they have no idea of the point cynthia made the the expectations are as winston winston says but they're not supported by any data uh, what's going to happen it's going to happen you're going to be in serious bad trouble until we get to the election or he has to resign or some hero emerges Okay, Mitt or whoever something is going to happen because we still maybe have a little bit too much time maybe not I mean, we're doing good hanging on here in the canoe. As That's we what we're doing. We're hanging on while people are dying. Well, yeah. well, Cynthia, let me give you one last shot at it. You know, maybe a 30 second shot. There are people dying every day. Um, and I guess, and, and there are those who argue that, that the actual death rate is less than it was a few weeks ago, even though the case rate is way, way higher. Does this encourage you in some way? Is, is, this, um, is this something that makes you a little more optimistic? No, just the opposite. I'm absolutely the opposite of optimistic. I'm terrified because the more I see him walk away from all of it and the more I see him discounting the science, the more terrified I become. So okay, well, I guess that leaves it at uh, terrified. Uh, I don't know if that's the consensus, but um, it's certainly in the room. And so uh, holding right there on that point about being terrified, gosh, let's see what happens this week. And, and let's, let's look beyond into the greater global issue here, uh, the pandemic, to see where the dots are connecting and uh, what is happening, not only the US, but humanity, um, not, not only in terms of disease, but the social effect and the political effect and the economic effect. Oh, oh, I'm... I have to go now. Uh, good, goodbye, Winston. <laughs> goodbye, Stephanie. <laughs> goodbye, Cynthia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mahalo.